Now that we've got used to putting things on the page, such as pictures and text, we need to talk about master pages because that's really where the power of publishing programs comes in. So rather than in Word where you just have to type page after page and kind of make it look the way you want to, what we can do in Publisher is to make a master page. We begin every document with one master page, which is called Master A. I'm going to create a new one. Let's call this class photos because that's one of the most common masters that we have to make. Let's make sure that we've got facing pages. So that's two pages in a spread and we'll press OK. We know that we're in the master page because there are no other pages here. And you can also see that it's highlighted here. So let's do a couple of things just to set our page up. I'm going to go to the layers, making sure that we've got the layers visible because we're going to be working on locking some things so that they don't move. Let's start directly with a rectangle. I'm going to go from the bleed to the bleed like that. I'm going to go up to the fill where it says the fill color. And I'm going to make this a dark bluish color like that. Click on the black and you can see that this rectangle moves if I even accidentally touch my mouse on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the lock where it says rectangle there. I'm going to click on the lock and effectively that stops me from being able to move this rectangle around. Now what we're going to do is add a picture frame and a text box, kind of like a class photo with a name underneath. We'll click over here where it says add layer. So we've added a new layer. Let's go to the picture frame, just add it in like this. Now you can see that it has taken the color of the background. That's because it's transparent. So let's very quickly give that a fill. Now you can make it white. I have this tendency to make all picture frames bright pink. And the reason I do that is when you're making a yearbook and you have hundreds and hundreds of photos, sometimes it's easy to miss a photograph. If you see a big pink square in the middle of a page, you will know that there's something missing in your yearbook or on a page, let's say. So I, I've had this habit for years and it's kind of worked for me. I'm going to just make this a little bit bigger like that. Now let's just zoom in so that we can do a bit more detailed work here. I'm going to grab a text box and I'm going to draw a text box like this. You can see that it snaps to the edges of other items. That makes our life so much easier. Now we've got a couple of things already have gone wrong here. I can see that we've already got columns. And if I look up, you can see that the last time I changed the font size, I changed it to 96. So the font size of this tiny little text box is 96. Let's fix those two problems now. Let's get the columns back down to one and let's get the font size to a reasonable 10 for now. If I type in something, you'll see that it's orange. Again, it's taking the color that I chose last time. That's not a problem for me. We're going to write the name and the surname like this. I'm going to click on the black arrow. Now let's change that to white. I think that looks good. I'm not really after Baskerville for the name. So let's choose something like, let's go with Avenir and maybe make it like that. That's a kind of formal but smart font. And I'm not liking that space in between the name and the surname. I think it doesn't look so great. And what we'll do is we'll go up to the line spacing here and five is pretty good, but I think what I'll do is change it to about two or three. Might even make that one. Yeah, I was a bit happy with that one. And let's just make that text box a little bit smaller. Now, finally, I've noticed that the name and the surname are kind of hugging the top edge. So again, let's go back here and adjust that to adjust them centrally vertical or vertically central, I should say. And now I think that will look really smart when we've got all the names and all the photos of students in there. Let's just zoom out. So far, we've only made one. So what we're going to do is select both and we'll group them. So that's layer and group. That's command and G if you're wanting to do shortcuts on your keyboard. We'll make a copy and a paste like this and a copy and a paste like this. I'm just going to move some elements around like this. And what I'm going to do now is select all three. And what I'm going to do is click on this alignment button. And we're going to do some little magic here. Let's align all of these boxes to the top, which is already there. And we're going to also space them equally 
on the horizontal axis like that. And now if we move them to the margin, you can see that we have perfect spacing in between, perfectly aligned at the top. That's a good way to start. I'm going to now group all three because they're exactly where I want them to be. I'm going to copy and paste them like this, copy and paste them like this. Now I can see that I don't have enough space to put another one. So what I'm going to do is put that last set of boxes at the bottom. I'm going to select all nine of them, go to my alignments, and now I'm going to space them like this. So you can see I've got perfect spacing in between both horizontally and vertically. Let's just zoom out for a second. I'm going to select all nine and I'm going to copy and paste them and move them across here like this. Now finally what we can do is just add a kind of stylish text box on the side here. So let's grab a text box, go from that margin all the way down to that margin there. Let's just double click. It should still have the same font that we had last time. So I'm going to write in PYP1. See that writing's way too small. So let's just make it bigger. And there you go. So we can do something like that. Let's also then change the font to something a little bit nicer. So in this case, I think if we're going to go with primary school, we can kind of get away with chalkboard and we can still affect the spacing of our letters as well, because we might want to adjust that. And so I think it was on 96. I'm actually going to make it about 110 just to make it look a little bit nicer like that. Let's do a copy and a paste. Move that across. Now it might not be the greatest looking page, but I think you'll agree two minutes to make a whole page like this is pretty cool. Now that's just a master page, so it doesn't really affect the yearbook in any way. All it is is a page which I can use later on. So let's see how we can use a master page to make pages in our yearbook. Let's go back to the yearbook as we started it. That's just one title page at the moment there. When we want to add pages to our yearbook, we simply click on this button over here, the add pages button. We make sure that there's two pages. Now here it says, what master page are you using? In this case, we are using the class photos one. And there we have a new set of pages that have been made out of the master. If we now again, let's say want to add a number of these pages, you can see how easy it is. Now, the point of using a master page is that if you then realize later on that there was something about that you didn't like, something in all the class photos, ordinarily you would have to go to each page and change each element one by one and it would drive you insane. What we can now do is double click on a master page, go to an element and say, well, actually, I wanted it to be orange. I know it doesn't look good, but I'm just doing this as an example. So once you change a master page, when we go back to our publication, you can see that it changes in every single page that took that master page as a template. And that's why we use master pages. It not only saves us time, but later on is ridiculously convenient when we have to change elements in a number of pages. Of course, you're going to be making master pages for your class photos, maybe for your actual class pages where the teacher of that class is going to submit photos and some text. And really, that's about all you need to make master pages for. It will save you a lot of time, but really, you don't want to make a master page for something that you're only going to use once. For example, a title page doesn't need a master page. But when you do, make a master page and you will save a huge amount of time.